Hello and welcome to Dateline Lagos on Channels Television, the last edition for the month of February. I'm Ayo Tsunde Balugum. Coming up on the program, Governor Sawolu rolls out relief measures, reduces work days for Lagos civil servants, Governor Sawolu conducts test run of Red Line train, La Sema, first Metro Infrastructure Limited signs MOU on safety management along Red Rail Line routes, and state government deploy tools to agencies for effective land administration. The Lagos State Governor, Babajide Sawolu, has announced sweeping interventions which the state will be implementing in order to reduce the effect of the current economic hardship on its citizens. Now, Governor Sawolu made this comment during a live media chat where he conveyed his empathy to the state residents groaning under the rising cost of living, resulting in inflation of food and commodities prices. I'm taking responsibility in terms of being efficiently, you know, um, and pro proactive, you know, to be able to deal with some of those new stances. This is the first media chat Governor Babajide Sonwolu is holding with select broadcast stations at the Lagos House Marina. Can we even be creative and have a flexible working hour? The Lagos State Governor begins by addressing the economic challenges, especially high cost of living as it affects many residents of the state. He reels out his plans to tackle the situation. Civil servants from level 0, from 1 to 14, will come to the office maximum three times a week. Right? Not that any form of government will be shut down, it will be all calendarized and it will be on schedule. Levels 15 to 17 will miss work a day. What are we seeking to achieve? We're seeking to achieve a process where people will even slow down, right? Try and let us know that the, the pressure, right, we can reduce it, you know, from, you know, from the work environment that we find ourselves. We don't want a charged, you know, public workforce. We don't want, you know, an aggravated public workforce. Let them be able to see reasons and work remotely. Transport cost is also a major, major, major pain that our citizens are. So almost immediately from this weekend, we're throwing back a 25% reduction on all public transportation. But we're working with the various unions to ensure that we also can support them. But on our BRT, on our trains, on our ferry services, you are going to begin to enjoy that almost immediately from this weekend. Why Continuous I... provision of quality health care services is also top priority for the government. Where all our 31 general hospitals will be given free child delivery. Either during normal birth or caesarean birth, we will, we will, we will take up the, the cost so that we reduce the pressure you know, on, on, on our people almost immediately. We are also working with them to reduce the cost of some particular types of drugs, hypertension, diabetics, and we can give a rebate at our hospitals. Our six health districts, we have six, we are the only ones that have that in the country, by the way. We have six health districts which are headed by permanent secretary. Over the next three months, they will be doing what we call the health mission twice a week. On a health mission, you know, they'll put up the canopy, doctors will be there, nurses will be there. People will just come in. About a thousand people, two thousand people will come and get a health check. You know, maybe you're diabetic, you're hypertensive, they check your blood pressure, and they will give you medicines, you know, based on what it is that they, they realize I mean, is, is wrong with them. And maybe some eye, you know, testing. I'll, I'll check if we have, you know, enough of that to go around. This media chat certainly gives right. Governor Sawolu an opportunity to talk about many issues in one sitting. And after food and health, the governor says there's no stalling in the provision of adequate security. We're doing a food purchase and redistribution that will cover about 300,000 households, not just individual households, that will have 10 kg rice, 5 kg gari, 5 kg beans, you know, and have other small, small things like tomato and the rest of it in a combo bag. We're going to be opening, you know, um, what we call Sunday markets in about 42 markets in Lagos. Sunday market. What you would see in, that, in, in those markets, you know, is the same sort of like, you know, st stable, you know, food item. But this time, you'll be buying, but you'll be buying at a reduced cost. We're going to cap what you can buy at not more than 25000 and we'll be giving you a 25% rebate immediately there. You know, so we have started that 
at our middle market in Iduro, which you have all seen, but we're taking it to 42 identified markets in Lagos. So that Sunday market will happen for the next five, four, five Sundays, and we'll continue to review. So we will make all the logistics available, all the food items will be at this. We're working with the local government, with the leaders of the market. We've identified and we'll publish, you know, all these things. That's the second level. The third level will be that we are now going to do what we call you know, the, the, the soup bowl, the, the, the soup kitchen. We did it also during COVID. We want to identify um, mama put, zile, mama, you know, um, 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 caterers that are in, in your do. And we want to be able to feed between 1,000 and 1,500 in every local government per day, you know, at the first instance for the next, you know, 30 to 60 days. Um, if they give approval for state police today, I have 10,000 men that I can further train and get them ready, you know, to, and these are people that know the entire community. He also announces three working days for civil servants from level 0 to 14, while levels 15 to 17 are to resume at their duty posts four days in a week. And teachers will continue to work five days to educate future leaders in Lagos State. Governor Babaji Desangwalu took a test run of the Red Rail Line Corridor ahead of the formal inauguration of the Lagos Rail Mass Transit Infrastructure on Thursday. It says the project is ready for inauguration and warns traders to stop trading along the rail corridor. The 37-kilometer rail line built by the Lagos Metropolitan Area Transport Authority is ready for inauguration. Governor Babaji De Sao his deputy Kadri Hamzad, the managing director of Lagos Metropolitan Area Transport Authority, some state executive council members and the Lagos State Environmental Sanitation Enforcement Agency are out to inspect the infrastructure facilities of the Red Line Station. The team embarked on a train ride from the Keja Mega Station, viewing Agbado, Agege and Iju stations while on the test drive. Governor Samuel moved along the coaches in a bid to ascertain the conditions the train set of Targo wagons built in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, in the United States. Yes. Governor Samuel returned to Ikeja train station within 15 minutes and says the project is ready for commissioning. the major issues for the government is getting traders off the rail tracks despite several warnings on the dangers we've had a journey all the way to Iju and back and i think um, um you as journalists can better um re report what you saw um yeah so we still have a few cleaning to do inside uh, the, the they train themselves because they still have wrappers and rest of it. So it's probably just all of that, you know, and, and to continue to test, you know, the air conditioning, which is working, you know, because they all came from different um, climatic weather. The state government says enforcement exercise will continue to clear the train path of unapproved activities. The challenge around pedestrian on the track, pedestrian on the track and the kind of um, and the kind of wrong thing we saw, you know, on, on those tracks. So you've seen that we continue to do the enforcement. We will continue to do fiscal barricades on those lines, working with NRC. Um, but, but the message here is really for our citizens and people that are living virtually on the track that a track is not a place of residence. It's not a place of um, commercial activity and we should continue to encourage people to stay off it. We will continue to enforce it. In fact, we will continue to ensure that we clear the tracks because we do not want to record 
any form of fatality because once you know um, the, the intra train starts you know it is not every two, two hours it's not every three three it's not every it's going to be fairly regular 10 minutes 15 minutes and we don't want them to get comfortable you know that they have to stay on the track and it's not a place for people to stay so that is a major challenge that we've, we've reduced it considerably in the last one two months but will not stop you know other than that i think the stations are ready the trains are ready i'm sure the gentlemen of the press are ready and i'm sure nigerians are ready the red rail line infrastructure will be inaugurated on thursday by president bola tinubu trips on the rail corridor will be a regular one and residents will stay away from the tracks to avoid any fatalities Still on rail infrastructure, the Lagos State Government, through the State Emergency Management Agency, La Sema, has signed a Memorandum of Understanding, MOU, with a private firm, First Metro Infrastructure Limited, to combat any emergency case that may occur along the Red Line Rail when fully in operation. Securing the 37-kilometer Red Rail Line corridor is a major priority for the Lagos State Government. The major objective has prompted the State Emergency Management Agency Response Unit to take proactive steps in safeguarding all the stations along the red line. This is the LASEMA response piece and unit along the route. We do a resource mapping, our capacity and capability along the concept, the, the dedicated route of uh, FMA Health, and of course, we do assessment of the distance of map, proximity mapping of our resources to the land in case of any emergency. La Sema and the First Metro Infrastructure Limited is signing a memorandum of understanding with the First Metro Infrastructure Limited on the provision of safety measures for passengers of the Red Rail Line. The permanent secretary of the agency assures of adequate security within and outside the corridor. Late last year, a command control was established concerning our waterways. Today, we are partnering with a reformed reputable organization that is in charge of the red line. A train services that we commence for Agbado station and we end in Ido station. We have built their capacity in terms of safety management. We have done risk analysis, resource mapping around these goods. Believe me, we've moved the red line from the terrestrial area We've moved it to our command control. Our command control that monitors, evaluates any form of emergency or life threatening issues in legal states. In our command control, we have all the first responders institute. Also, we have about seven bases around the states and we will monitor the red line in such a way that people, good people of Lagos State, we have confidence in the establishment, we have confidence in the system, we will have confidence that as part of their safety, as part of any life-threatening issues, we will be there, both medical, surgical. We have positioned our search and rescue along the line in a strategic way. The Chief Operating Officer of First Metro Infrastructure Limited, Mr. Adedeji Adenika, says risk assessment mapping has been carried out on the rail line to ensure optimal services for the people. We just um, signed an MOU with um, La Sema and um, the purpose of this is to ensure that um, we have, um, I mean the MOU, we've, been, we've actually, before the signing of this MOU, we've actually been um, 
working on um, ensuring the safety of um, passengers and um, everyone on the service. So what LASEMA is doing for us and for the people of Lagos State is ensuring that um, there's a secure, the, the safety, ensuring the safety of people and um, the entire service basically. They've carried out a root assessment of the safety of um, the um, people who are going to be riding on the on the trains as well as a route assessment to ensure that um, the security along the line they have established um, a command center i mean they've, they've actually incorporated the um, service into their command center here so they can have an early response in case of emergencies and all that they're also involved in um, training of um, the operators of the staff of the um, service to ensure that um, the um, safety compliant and all that so there's a lot which um, this entails this partnership will go a long way in protecting real line <laughs> while the Lagos state government is making provision to safeguard lives and properties along the rail corridor residents are also advised to stay off the tracks seven stations from Agbadoa boundary town in Ogun state to Oyingo in Lagos Central. Lagosians, it is no news that the present administration of Mr. Governor Babajide Sawulu delivered projects in different sectors of the economy through the themes agenda. With this success in mind, the second term of the present administration has included social inclusion, gender equality, and the affairs of youths in its agenda. Now, we have the themes plus agenda. With this, no one is left behind on account of their social status, gender, or age. Lagosians, be prepared for another four years of a total revamp in all sectors. And finally, on the program, the Lagos State Government has deployed ICT devices to the State Planning Information Center and other related departments in charge of land administration for automation of all physical planning activities in the state, marking a new era of innovation, efficiency that will simplify the process of building plan and even enhance the ease of doing business in Lagos. Take a look. <laughs> The Electronic Physical Planning Processing Center, Laosai Kaja, is a venue for the presentation of ICT working tools to officials of the state government who monitor the effective land administration in Lagos State. Staff of the Physical Planning and Automation Department, as well as officials of the State Planning Information Center in the Ministry of Physical Planning and Urban Development, are here to pick up their electronic devices for the automation of all physical planning activities that will make land processing seamless in the state. With these tools at our disposal, we are poised to revolutionize our approach to urban planning from, the, you know, from digital platforms, for streamlined processes to do special technologies for informed decision making. Each tool represents a step forward in our quest for enhanced performance and service delivery. Uh, before now, all we do has been largely uh, paper based. A lot of approval processes, commissioner, SAPS, before the client gets a simple CTC. CTC are documents that are supposed to have been stored in the digital archive somewhere that people can access easily. And a structure that will be put in place whereby last week and the fiscal planning the department are now fused together. I mean, so PPAD, as it is known now, is a huge database of information for planning approval, state government projects, policy, every, every ministry that is involved in uh, uh, project implementation ought to you know, submit their as no drawings to PPAD now. So anybody all over the state has a right or has the means and opportunity to write from the comfort of their living room or bedroom, communicate with uh, PPAD and get information on anything. Uh, last week is a working tool 
but PPID is a larger picture that we should be looking at. This is just one step of the many steps of our digital, digitalization process. Our department was created in line with the Lagos Teams Plus agenda, a visionary initiative aimed to at transforming Lagos into a 21st century economy. Today, we take a significant step towards realizing this vision as we embrace these new tools and technologies. As we embark on transition towards becoming a smart city, we understand that change is inevitable. I encourage everyone to welcome this change and imbibe the new innovation that promise to make physical planning activities seamless and efficient. These advancements are not just technology. They are about improving the lives of the people of Lagos State. These advancements are not just about technology. They are about improving the lives of the people of Lagos State. They are about making our city more livable, more sustainable, and more resilient. The State Commissioner for Physical Planning and Urban Development says the automation system will make things easier and urge the personnel in charge not to compromise while carrying out their duties. What we uh, stand to achieve with this automation is to make uh, things easy because that is exactly where the whole world is facing now. In some few years to come, um, apart from recreation and uh, uh, probably feeding because you can't do e-feeding, <laughs> and you cannot do e-recreation. You want to watch film, you have to be there yourself. You want to exercise in the gym, you have to do it yourself. He cannot do that. So apart from those two, virtually every other thing will be on the e-platform. However, the key thing standing out there is uh, the human factor out of it. We are still going to have some human uh, factor, human element, some few human beings will still sit down to ensure that it works. And that is where the challenge is. Even if the system is 99.999%, that 0.0001% is still very, very vital. And that is where you come in. That please, let us ensure that that 0.00001% that is entrusted on us is not compromised. It's very, very important. For the Special Advisor on Electronic Geographic Information System and Urban Development, the provision of these tools for building plans will help document all land matters in the state. We are having documents digitized to show what we have. So with the one that we are doing here in last week, the privilege that last week our PTAD has, that is to be able to document all those within Lagos State who have approval. I can tell you, and I am not wrong, that we have up to 5 million properties in Lagos. And I can also tell you, and I'm not wrong, that we have less than 500,000 properties in the land registry. 500,000 or 5 million. How many percent is that? That's 10%. So we have less than 10% in the land registry. And I also know that it is only when you have land documentation that you can apply for building approval. So that tells you that the total number of people that don't have building approval in Lagos is about 90 to 95 percent. Our commissioner is saying, come, we want to help you when we install this equipment. Before we call Mr. Governor to launch, we should be able to get from the Permanent Secretary Office of Urban Development how many properties that we have scanned into our system. How many approvals do we have? And with the portal, because the portal is now being being launched, when the portal, from the day the portal is launched, that means the outside world, they know whether or not their property is on that system. If your property is not on that system and you are building approval, all you need to do is to bring the approval in to LASPA. LASPA will verify it and clear it, put it on the system. And that is why we have also provided LASPA with their own scanner. You know, it's interesting to tell you that we have one brand new scanner there. That scanner is more than 20 million naira. Just this small thing. It's more expensive than this big, big thing. 
you know so i will have one already in last one so when you go there if they clear it up to the general manager because i believe it's only the general manager or the commissioner who will clear something that is not already in our system you understand once they clear it it becomes part of our system if they don't clear it run for amnesty so we will then know how many people the whole idea is that within the next 24 months after amnesty everybody you understand everybody you understand must have at least been counted and documented on our system Lagosians can now interface with officials of the Ministry of Physical Planning and Urban Development from the comfort of their homes to address any land issue. So that's the program for this week. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'm Ayotunde Balugu. Remember, obey all state traffic laws and, of course, endeavor to keep our environment clean. Till next time, please stay safe. Bye for now.